What's up guys and welcome back to Song Fua here at the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here with me as we go through the 17th of December in 1858. Now, I do want to preface this by saying this is about the point where the game starts to heat up. It starts to get pretty stressful from here on out. There are a few filler missions that aren't that tough, but from this spot forward, we're actually going to have to spend a ton of time dealing with all the planning aspects of the game. And so, before I waste much more time, let's just jump straight into it. So here we go. Oh, load screen. See, sometimes it goes to a load screen, and sometimes it gives me a storyline beforehand, and I never know which it's going to be. Now, there are a couple traps we don't have yet, but this level we're going to be playing around with the Ballista. Additionally, we're going to be dealing with the Windigo for the first time, who in the last episode we saw in a cutscene. So let's jump into the storyline. Hello, Arnold. And let's do it. Chapter 13, Blizzard and Windigos, December 17th, 1858. Jack, your friend is back to see us. Quay, have you seen Mishta Macheshu, the shaman of our tribe? I sent him here yesterday to warn you of a great peril, and I haven't seen him since. With that blizzard out there, I'll bet he's lost in the forest. Hmm, not likely. Great Fox knows better than anyone how to travel in a storm. In any case, it's too late now to prepare for the coming of the Windigo. <laughs> Me, I have to find Mr. Mechishu as quickly as possible. Yeah. Okay. Well, this looks to me like a job for Joey. You fall on your noggin or something, brother. I'm the oldest, so I'm the one that goes. What you can do is take care of barricading the cabin real good. And if our sister keeps raving, put on the pine tar poultice I just prepared for her. If you say so, Jack. A pine tar poultice. That sounds just horrific. And this level we have the Ballista, which for the first time is going to be coming into use. Now this mission is not that hard. This mission is fairly simple. It doesn't take a whole lot of work to get done. But let's see if we can figure out what's going on in all of these waves. So... The first wave appears as though it's all coming to the house. Every single one of these guys come into the house, and that's all we have to worry about. So what we might consider doing is corralling everybody into the same direction to get this done. Now our wind is going to the southwest, which means I want to reposition it probably in this direction to keep ourselves safe. But what I'd really like to do is get all of these wolves in this one little area and blow them up with one barrel. I think that's really the plan that I'm going to aim for. So what we'll do first and foremost is we'll block that off, I think. And then that should force all of these wolves. Well, do I want to deal with them separately or together? This could turn into a really long mess if I do it that way. Let's deal with them all by their lonesome. Since I don't want to barricade all this up, I don't really know what's coming down the line. So first and foremost, let's lay down a bait trap. We'll put it right about there, and then we'll put a spike trap on top of that, and that should get rid of three of those six at least. The other spike trap we'll go ahead and place right here. We'll give that a little bit more time in between the two so that if anything goes wrong, I can kind of tally the amount of money that we've made in my head and make sure that it's killing off the right amount of wolves. We're already down to 245 AP, so we may not have a whole lot of money for purchasable items on this go, but... We'll, kind of, we'll keep our heads up. I mean, for the most part, you can get these missions done with the traps on hand. It's... Sometimes you have to engage in hand-to-hand -hand just to get things done, but for the time being, I think we'll be alright. So down here, we want all of these wolves, all six of these guys, on the same path down here. And so what I think I'll do is I will... Let's look at what they're doing. They're coming down that way, so let's get rid of this avenue right here. This has got to go. Alright, and then what's the, what are they going to do now? They're going to go around that way, so this has to go as well. And now that that's taken care of, it should pipeline them through the same way that the other wolves are going. And I think that leaves us in a pretty good spot to start whittling away at them. Now, these are costing me 15 cents a piece. How much is the barrel? 65 cents? All right. Well, I think I can probably fight these guys off with some crafty fisticuffs. And then, well, let's see what we can do here. I think on this playthrough, I've taken the 
increased damage from our net traps, so we may want to think about making use of that. Yeah, I have. Okay. Or I can reduce the price of my explosives, which is also an interesting thing to do and makes the game run a little bit smoother. Now, we do have a lot more melee skills than I usually have at this point, so that's good. We're not going to have to look over in this direction very frequently in the coming days. However, I think what I will do... Let's take the better explosives. The cheaper explosives actually make your life a lot easier. It makes it so you can just kind of wing it for the most part. The cheap explosives make the whole thing kind of flow the way you would want, and so that's what I'm going to try and stick with. Now, these six are taken care of. We were going to fight these two, if I remember correctly. Well, maybe not. Maybe we'll just blow them up. I think we should six times. These are... Yeah, we should get our money back. So what I'll do is I will put a another firewall right there. And then what we'll consider doing is we will put a... God, I, I've got to get the timing down right so that they all arrive at the same time. What I'm considering doing is we'll actually put a bit of bait right there. And that should be like a gather point bait. We'll put another one right there and a final one right there. And we'll drop a barrel right in between all of it so that at any point during the process, I can blow it whenever I feel like I need to. Now, we need to deal with the second wave. So let's take a look at what we have going for the second wave. This may be too many baits right here. Sometimes I overbait and sometimes I underbait. For the most part, though, God, there was a joke right there, I'll tell you what. But I'm not going to go there. I am not going to go there. So wave two, we're just going to have to deal with one Wendigo who's coming to the house. And this is where we're going to put down the first Ballista. Now, there are other ways that we could do this. The Ballista is expensive. It's going to cost us, actually, what is it? 20 cents. So it's not so bad. It's actually, balance-wise, a lot better than the Wolf Trap, to be fair. The Ballista does 80 damage, so it's a giant nuke that we can drop on our enemies, and it works out perfectly fine. All the times I've tested it out, it works great. In the tooltip, they say that you can't, ro like, you can rotate it during the day, but they make it seem like you have to position it within a certain radius. You don't. I can flip this thing 360 degrees all the way around and fire it at whatever I want. You just get one shot, though. That's all you get, so don't miss, for God's sake sake you miss and you're gonna be in a world of hurt now for the final wave we've got a wendigo coming from the north and from the south so what I'll do is I'll put a ballista right there and then a final ballista let's take a look at the way he's gonna be approaching I don't like that approach vector at all so what we'll do ooh, that's the bonfire I do that all the time we'll go like so and we're gonna try and get him to go around this way just to buy myself a little bit of time and I can't guarantee well Let's see what we can do here. So he's going to go around that way. And I will consider... We'll put another wall down right there. And we can't really block that wall, unfortunately. But I want him to take the long way around. I want him to have quite an epic journey to actually get to the church up here. Otherwise, we're going to find ourselves wishing we had bought ourselves a little more time in the greater scheme of things. So he's going to try and go that way now. Okay, so we'll block that too. Sometimes you have to do a lot of firewall work. You gotta have more firewalls than a corporate bank. And so, let's see... I think that'll buy us enough time. I don't think there's any pressing need to push that any further. I mean, I suppose I could throw one more right there. And that would really stretch it out. Because then you'd have to go, yeah, let's do that. And then what we'll do is with our final little bit of points, we'll drop another ballista right here maybe. That actually looks kind of nice. We'll put it right there on the edge. And so, let me one more time run through every single step and figure out where I need to put my wind. Okay, my wind needs to be broken to the northeast in order to keep myself healthy and safe. So that's what we'll do. And I think that's about all we're going to be able to do for the day. So let's do our one little logging that we can. And we'll run to Wolvesvale first and foremost to make sure that we buy ourselves some new supplies. Now... I never find myself firing a rifle twice, and so I'm actually rethinking using the double-barreled rifle. I may, in fact, go for something a little bit more beefy. This rifle right here, the Whitworth, is pretty sweet, but it takes forever to reload. The other thing we might consider is saving up for the on-field musket rifle, which deals a ridiculous amount of damage, reloads pretty quickly, and actually is fairly useful in the greater scheme of things. We've got more than enough bullets of varying types right now, and for this mission, I think I'm going to use the Silver Axe to fight the Windigos because our catapults don't quite have the oomph that I would like them to have in order to kill them off, so... We're going to go to the hotel first and foremost, we're going to buy out all of their alcohol, as always, just increasing the public rumor that the O'Carroll brothers are just ridiculous alcoholics. There we are, and we may have to save for one mission or so to get a new gun. For now, I think it'll probably be fine. 
Other than that, let's go ahead and head to the Indian village, or the Native American village, the Mashtihwash, and go talk with Ushimak. And once we talk with Ushimak, or Ushimak, or however the hell you say his name, we'll figure out what else we want to get. Now, it is tempting to buy an upgraded silver axe. They do have tomahawks, and they do have pipe axes, which are pretty badass. This one you can smoke out of. How cool is that? But before we do that... Let's go ahead and buy out the silver that they have at the moment. I'd like to keep my supplies more or less rounded off. So, the melee is going to increase in the next episode or so, which is making me a little nervous about using Jack, but hopefully things will work out in our favor. Let me run through every step one more time, make sure that every contingency is accounted for. And right there, I'm just eyeballing it real fast. Yeah, I think we'll be okay right there. Wave 2, we're just going to shoot right there, and wave 3, we're going to fire there, and then run back up here, and fire there. Good. Okay, so everything appears to be in order, so let's do this thing. We'll jump straight into Nightfall. We've already leveled ourselves up. I am going to bring the Silver Axe for the evening, just in case, because I don't think we're going to be actually fighting any werewolves during the course of this mission. We're actually just going to be blowing them up, slicing them, dicing them, poisoning them, doing all kinds of terrible things to our lupine friends, but otherwise not really occupying ourselves too heavily with fighting them by hand. So while we've still got a moment here, let me rotate my wind. And we're going to put it right about there, I think, is going to be where I want it. And so in order for that to work, we're not going to be able to run off to our trap, which is down in the south real quick, but that's fine anyways. We're going to have to stand right here and let the northeast wolves pass. I think with the three things of bait, we should make it. I mean, worst case scenario is I blow it. And then beyond that, okay, we got the first set of three wolves. Beyond that, I think that I'll, I may have to fight that bat group of wolves by hand. It's not something that I relish the thought of doing, but we do have a lot of bait over here, so it may turn out okay. They don't eat it quite as fast as the werewolves do. Werewolves tend to plow through the bait, so I may... Yeah, we're going to be all right. We will be perfectly fine. And then that last... What, a, what was up there? Oh, yeah, it was the three wolves. They'll get gotten by the spike traps. And so I actually don't know if all of them are within the range of that bomb right now. They sort of look like they are, and it tempts me to kind of detonate it now and just save the time. If I had known they would have barely got through one bait, I wouldn't have placed the third. But whatever. We're close enough. I'm not super stressed. Oh, no. They split up between the baits. That's all bad. Oh, well. It looks like the radius took care of them, so it'll be all right. And then this trap up here. Did it handle them? Okay, they're just now getting to it. And so we're going to set up right here for our Windigo that's coming, I believe. And when you want to activate this thing, it's actually pretty impressive. It's got a giant stake attached to it. It should... Oh, no. Did we get four up there? That might be a problem. I think we got four on accident. So it happens sometimes. You just kind of have to deal with it. It's not something that I enjoy dealing with. But let me bait the rest of these guys over to here. And what we'll do is we will actually fire a holy bullet at the sucker. Are they still coming? That's weird. They're going around the long way. So let me reload real fast. And I don't like what's just happened. I don't like it when my plan doesn't work. Unfortunately, sometimes you can't deal with the problems that are going to come up, though. Like, sometimes it is it is what it is. So let's go ahead and hatchet this little guy to death. And there we go. So now we're good to roll for the next part of the mission. If I can get back over here to my ballista, this should be the easy part. We're past the difficult part where things should go wrong or can go wrong. We'll activate this thing. It's aimed just like you do with the musket. The only difference is that you can't hone in with it. You can't, like, zoom or anything like that. I don't know if you get a headshot bonus. I don't think there is, but I'm just going to shoot center mass to make sure that I get him in the first place because I really just don't want to miss. These things are super mean. They do a lot of damage. You want to be really careful when you bait the swing on them. And then you want to make real sure that you actually hit them because they are pretty ghastly. They also boast a ranged attack that can be t that right there. That's actually pretty tough to deal with. Oh, no. And this actually has gone rapidly out of control. And so let me see if I can just finish him off real fast with a taco knight. And there it is. Now, for the next portion of the mission, I think I needed to set up down here. Let me take a quick look. For part two, yeah, we just needed to set up down here, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Once we get to here, I'll go back up and I will place the wind in a different direction to make sure that we don't draw the other guy back with our stink, because in between werewolf fighting, there's honestly not a whole lot of time for bathing. That's a little known fact about werewolf hunting. Van Helsing, the guy smells terrible. He smells like a bag full of skunk buttholes. 
And so there we are. We've put another round into this Wendigo. And so let me see if I can duck him real fast. And then if we can just get him stunned, I think I can finish him for the most part. And there it is. So he's already down. Now the problem with Wendigos is they don't give you any cash for dropping them. And that's something that kind of sucks. I mean, it takes a lot of resources to get rid of the Wendigos. It's going to take you... Oh, at least a grip of change. I mean, it takes you 30 cents and a good, like, grip of action points every time you want to kill one. And it looks like we're going to have some leisure time down here, which is going to work out for me just fine. So let's go ahead and move the wind around. There we go. And we're now somewhat safe. I don't remember what's coming in the third wave, but I think we'll be all right with it positioned to the south. If not, we'll deal with it when the time comes. We do have the weapon that we need out right now for Wendigos and anything else that could go wrong, so I'm not really going to stress about misplaced materials or anything like that. He's closing in on us now, and we're going to have a brief moment right here to shoot as he comes around the corner. If I miss, this could get really, really rowdy, and we'll end up using a ton more alcohol than I had originally intended to, but if we get him right here, it should be a nice, clean execution. And there we go. We got him. I think I wasn't leading that one properly, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to get while the getting's good, and I'm not going to complain about potential weirdness in the game's system. So, And there it is. I think we've got him down. And is that the last thing we're going to have to deal with? Or do we have one more wave? Oh, that's it. I thought there was three. Maybe I miscounted. I think I did. I miscounted what wave I was on. I was just being a little ridiculous. And so that was December 17th. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy planning this game out. That's really, if, there, if you've got an inside planner, like an inner intellectual planner that likes setting machinations at hand and watching everything just fall into place, there used to be a game called Deception or something like that where it was the same thing like in a castle where you would make traps, you tried to link them together, or similar to like Orcs Must Die, that sort of stuff. If you're into that, this game is great for that. We got 745 XP for the day. I, as far as I can tell, they should have just given you a level in between every single mission because the XP doesn't really seem to matter. There aren't secondary objectives or anything that give you extra XP, so they could have just dropped it and given you another skill point every single level. We only got a dollar for that one, which given how much we spent, kind of sucks, but we're going to live with the results of our efforts. And so my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here. I don't think we're going to have enough time for the next mission, which is a little lengthy, if I remember correctly. I don't honestly remember it may be short or it may be really long it's one of the two it's either a super short one or a super long one it's impossible for me to remember at this point but thank you for joining me here at the nerd castle for another episode in our let's play of song foi i hope you've been enjoying it and i hope to see you next time when we play december 18th and deal with werewolves so i'll see you guys tomorrow and take care out there everybody